Anybody else who worked on the committee, stand up. We've got several who work in this cabin, a number of those, but there's some things that we've been needing to do, just been counted with the party for some time. And Mike has spent an unbelievable amount of time and effort in bringing this to this point. Let's thank Mike Jablonski for his dedication and donation. touch on them so that when we the next time we go through them we won't have to repeat all of that and we can get through them. Okay, thank you. Now let's go to one of the controversial ones. <laughs> Historically, since about 1980, the Democratic Party has had a prohibition against its officers and its various committees and the party itself from uh, endorsing a candidate um, in a Democratic primary. The way it currently reads is if there is another Democrat in the race. Uh, that was done for some fairly obvious and I think very big and good reasons at the time. Times have changed. So what I'm asking you to do is review that policy. Uh, here's how they've changed. 
uh, all of you know that the Tea Party uh, began uh, to gain some access to Republican candidates and get elected as Republicans. Recently, Tea Party members have tried to qualify as Democratic candidates. In addition, we've had in several counties uh, people who are outright Republicans try to qualify as Democrats. The problem is Georgia law requires that we qualify anybody who meets the state requirements and pays their money. So they have to be on the ballot as a Democrat and, and we can't do anything about it. In consulting with several uh, county committees and talking among the leadership, the idea was to come up with a system where if something like this happens in a county, the county can petition the uh, executive, the state executive committee, and we can allow them to make an endorsement or to attack a candidate. Uh, the reason we put in the check was to make certain that county parties don't start, the county committees or the state party doesn't start uh, willy-nilly endorsing people they like. The whole idea is to bring that into effect at the time we have any uh, any, anybody who is questionable as a Democrat that we can comment on it. Yes. Oh, in a special election, we don't know what candidates. Question. Yeah, the question was, what does it mean when we talk about somebody who's identified as a Democrat but not um, nominated by the party? Uh, Georgia, several years ago, went to, to holding special elections. If somebody like leaves the legislature, the replacement is, used to be elected by having a special Democrat primary and then a general, a general election just for that seat uh, called a special election. The state moved to a system that eliminated the party primary. That what happens is everybody qualifies who wants to run, and they can designate themselves as either being Democratic or Republican. The, part, the good part about that is it saves uh, the counties a lot of money in terms of uh, having to run multiple elections. The bad part is it counts, it cuts the Democratic Party and the county committees out of identifying who they want to run as a Democrat. This is our idea for uh, bringing us back into uh, special elections. Excuse me, could you have the questioner be on the microphone? Okay. Uh, the question was, what is... It was, the question was, um, it says, um, not nominated by the Democratic Party or not identified, it says, or not identified on a special election ballot. And so I was saying, does that mean that um, we can campaign against a candidate not nominated by the Democratic Party uh, I.e. someone who wants to run in a primary against another Democrat. Well, the, if you're going to run in a primary, you have to say you are either a Democrat or a Republican. Okay? So what this says is if you are running in the special election and you didn't identify yourself with a party, uh, the county committee still has... Uh, it actually always has had the ability to campaign against that individual. The only prohibition has been campaigning against somebody who's identified themselves as a Democrat. And as I pointed out, there are some Republicans who are now qualifying as Democrats. Um, and we've had several, actually several situations in the deep past where people got elected and then turned around and changed parties on us after using our money, and there's nothing we can really do about it. Yes? 
The question was, they were, they, a different section in the uh, bylaws says that if uh, the party gives somebody money to run and then they change parties, we should take all action to uh, get the money back. And in fact, we at one time filed a lawsuit against a Democrat who turned Republican after using our money to win. The problem is, the, the only significance to really being a Democrat or Republican after the election is what caucus do you vote in. That is important because that is a governmental function. Giving people money to vote a certain way on a governmental function is bribery. So we decided the Democratic Party is really against bribery, so we've eliminated that. <laughs> Come on, come on down. All right, I can call out law. Is there a procedure for getting the election of the approval of the state committee? Where is the, how do we do that part of this bit? Okay, as we've said in the past, we do not want to put that type of information in the bylaws because then we're stuck with them. If we put them in rules, um, then we, then we have the ability to suspend the rules under certain circumstances. So the whole idea of this is to have the state committee, excuse me, the executive committee of the state party issue rules, including procedural rules, for how you apply for uh, this type of exemption. Anybody else? Next slide. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> He's coming. Okay, a lot of counties have asked that we change the dates that we hold certain elections. So what we tried to do is come up with a new way, a new term that meets um, a bunch of your requirements. I would say, I would ask, if you are a state committee and you have problems with the new dates, let us know because we're going to try to be flexible with the dates. Next. Um, this is the candidate form that is required before a candidate uh, goes in and gets qualified by a county committee. Uh, we've made some additional uh, really small changes that are important for us to report back to the Secretary of State. Yes, next. Um, one of our problems is Georgia is under a, the Georgia party is under a directive from the Democratic National Committee to make certain that we meet diversity requirements on several levels. The one level that's mandatory is that in county committees, we have geographic diversity. The idea being, let's say in a certain county, you don't want to have the Democratic Party run by everybody in the Northwest section. section. So the whole idea is to create ways to uh, uh, increase participation. Uh, the best way to do that is for a participation, is for a, uh, a petition to the County Affairs Committee. Uh, the rule, what we recommend and what the rules do say is that if you are in a county that has multiple districts, um, you know, just elect people along the district line. That worked before we started gerrymandering. Now we gerrymandered uh, some of these seats in such a way where it does not result in uh, geographic diversity. So the whole idea here is if you have, if you're in a situation like that, you can petition the County Affairs Committee to come up with a new system for geographic diversity. And, and in fact, I think Cobb County has already done that. Next. Uh, all votes shall be by signed paper ballot. Um, this means votes for electing people to things. 
things. It does not mean, for example, um, uh, some of the some of the procedural votes in minutes like this. Yes. Exactly. I mean, that, and that would be crazy. In the context, if you put this in the, the appropriate section, um, uh, I think it's clear that it's for. Uh, I think it's clear that that it's for major votes like that. But I think it, it would be appropriate to put a uh, a clause in there saying otherwise. Next. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, we are trying to and to repeat the question. Thank you. Keep yelling at me until I learn. Uh, the question was: Doesn't this increase the amount of paper that we use, and aren't we really trying to to decrease the amount of paper? Uh, can, you, can you come out into the street uh, of floor and pass the mic to the person there? Okay. Okay, so based on the change, I was noticing that, you know, we used to use a show of hands, and now you're going to be just basically going with paper ballot, and I was concerned that um, we should be moving more away from using paper ballot than, than um, trying to create more environmental issues. And our response to that, that was brought up when we were discussing these changes, the, the response is, that's absolutely right. We want to decrease the amount of paper that we use. Later on in the changes, you'll see that we're going to try to authorize the state committee, uh, the executive committee, to explore alternate ways of voting. For example, online voting, things like that, in order to make it easier for people to participate. Uh, but the, I, I think the whole purpose of this is for uh, is for it to be applied to larger, more important votes, and I think it's appropriate if, if we at least put some. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Yes. Is there any way we can put the? the uh, no. You say all votes are on paper ballot for a reasonable digital. Number? Could we put on there that we could have a reach, a reasonable digital equivalent? That is in a later proposal. Uh, Doesn't that affect the wording of you? Yeah. That's the idea. Okay, Any anything else? Okay, next. Um, this is the information form that needs to be given back to the uh, state party after you have your election. And essentially, we need this information um, it, both to report to the DNC, some of this is to report to the Secretary of State, but some of it is just for us to have a record of uh, when a vote was taken and whether the vote complied with the bylaws. Yes. Thank you. I want to go back to the diversity requirement uh, is there any exception for smaller counties or smaller areas? Where, where is that? Is there, is there something that, that they send in to indicate that they didn't have to meet that or what? Uh, yes, the, and there is a way to exempt a smaller county uh, from this. There has always been a way for, a, for any county that has a problem to exempt themselves. And in fact, we've had several counties this year um, exempt themselves from the requirement that you know it be based upon uh, county commission districts. What is required is just for you to show that what you're doing results in geographic diversity. If you can show that to us, we're fine with it. You, you don't look like that answered your question. Well. We, we, as I started out, we cannot exempt a party 
because we're under a, uh, an affirmative action decree from the DNC that requires diversity. But we'll work with you on that. Okay, next. Uh, this is basically so that we don't have credentials problems uh, just before a meeting like we've had today. Next. Just to clarify, that doesn't mean that the um, people who've been elected to the state position need to be uh, approved. It just needs to be need to be verified. That's correct. Um, what this provision, what this suggestion is, is that we increase the number of required state committee meetings from one to two. So we'll have a minimum of two state committee meetings each year, and it provides for the type of notice that needs to be given. Um, later on, we'll talk about how that notice can be given. Next. And the way they can be given is they can be given electronically. Um, our problem with doing things via email, WhatsApp, or whatever, is first of all, keeping track of them and the responses, and the second is the uh, is what to do with Democrats who do not have access to electronic um, uh, communication. And the only practical way we have of dealing with that is to identify as many people as possible and then we will mail them. Or we actually, in fact, had people knock on doors to, to tell them in the past. But this is our first move towards being all electronic in our voting and our notifications. Next. Uh, we're consolidating the standing committees that are set in the uh, bylaws. The way they were consolidated is we've had several situations where two committees really had jurisdiction over a problem. And so the idea was why not uh, combine those two committees and then um, avoid the jurisdictional problems. Yes? Uh, did you not think the strategic planning function was uh, important enough to be a standalone function rather than be enrolled into, I think, the budget and operations committee? Um, obviously, we thought it was important when we put it in there. Anybody ever see a strategic plan? Part of our problem. I mean, that, that committee has not on a regular basis develop a strategic plan. We need one. Yes, that's why we put it into the budget committee, because we also need a budget. That's just financial. What are we all worried That's why we're in a mess right now. That's why Republican controlling. We never had it. We should have it. And we should give it. That's what I say. planning. I don't think that there's anyone here. I don't believe there's anyone here or many people here who feel that it could be adequately handled as the specific tasks involved as part of another committee, especially one that's important such as budget. So we have several different issues. This is not a standalone strike of a committee. We have suggestion 5A, we have suggestion 5J, which is the entire duties that obviously have not been being performed by the Strategic Planning Committee. That needs to be taken out also. We have, you know, the way that it's been folded into suggestion 5A needs to be struck so that we can have a fully functional Strategic Planning Committee that we can find the people that are ready to do the work and get this accomplished so that we can move forward. Yes. Yes.
Boost as a committee that is definitely needed. Um, I know out in Douglas County, we end up having a strategic planning committee to put together, and then we won blue. Another Clint County came over, asked us to show them how, guess what? They turned their county blue. So definitely, if we want to turn the state blue, we need to have this committee. process in these provisions, the bylaws, so not only is there an issue about notification meetings, but there's also a follow-up, so that between that notice and for the day of the meeting, you guarantee you'll have a quorum before everyone comes to that site. Yeah, that's great. No, that's the next one. So we formed a, a strategic committee in Gwinnett County. And one of the things that we have been focused on is, is just messaging and what is our priority. And I think the state party needs that as well because what is our priority? What kind of messaging do we want? It? This is what this is an advantage that the Republicans have had over us is about messaging. We need to be on the same accord. And I think having a strategic committee and um, I have a few of the members here and we sat for hours and hours and talked about this. So I think it needs to be taken out. I don't think that that should be a standalone committee. Trust me. Okay, next slide. This is very useful. Thank you. Um, part of the <laughs> decree we are under with the Democratic National Committee, which goes back, by the way, 30 years, um, is that uh, we have an affirmative action committee. Uh, we're required to have an affirmative action committee as part of our delegate selection pro process. Going to, to, for the National Convention, going into the National Convention, Georgia was uh, identified as having done the best job on not only uh, forming a, an affirmative action committee, but uh, making recommendations and then implementing those recommendations. Uh, not only are there the national guidelines, there are also state guidelines um, that currently are in the bylaws. We just want to in, incorporate those bylaws, uh, uh, those quotas in the same thing that uh, they're already doing. Yes. What happens if there's a conflict between the national and the state? National wins. <laughs> I, I, I mean, there's a whole process for dealing with that, but I'm giving you the bottom line. It is, you know, they can tell us what to do. If we don't do it, they say, okay, we won't accept any of your delegates. So that's a problem. Next. Um, basically, we have had a problem in the past with the State Finance Committee saying we, we either have no responsibility for identifying where the funds come from, or we should be where, uh, we should be in charge of that responsibility. So the whole idea here was to make that clear, that if you're on the Finance Committee, um, you're expected to you know, not only give us a budget, but go out and actually implement uh, those plans. Next. Uh, as part of this, you know, Kip did an excellent presentation on where our money is. What we decided is to add to that a, a responsibility about what we are doing, uh, responsibility to report to the state committee of what else we are doing to increase uh, money in the future. Next. Yes. So you're leaving the responsibility of reporting, to, you're leaving the responsibility of reporting the financial state party affairs to the treasurer. Correct. And you're, you're just pulling it out of the community. Correct. Okay, well, which is further on down in the bottom line. Right. Right, and, and, and there's actually some technical reasons to do that that deal with 
um, how the Federal Election Commission um, deals with the state on federal elections, that if there is a problem, uh, FEC contacts the state treasurer. And this is actually what a lot of states have done, is they separated these functions, but of course they talk to each other. Okay. Next. Um, we're striking what used to be the unified subcommittee of the state finance committee, um, just because it's archaic. Go to the next slide. And taking out a bunch of committees that seem to be unnecessary. Next slide. Um, what we've done is uh, we have consolidated a lot of functions in the Credentials and Affiliated Organizations Committee. Um, the reason for this is that a lot of times things would go to the Credentials Committee and the Credentials Committee decided that they really don't have jurisdiction and it needs to go to another committee. And I mean, let's face it, we, have, we are balkanized with committees. So the idea is actually to try to make it more efficient. Um, 16 is the uh, Compliance Review Commission. This is a uh, committee, this is something that we have an equivalent in the existing bylaws. We are trying to strengthen that. One of the big questions I constantly get um, as general counsel, somebody saying, who do I bring this to? What this does by having a compliance review committee, uh, it should be obvious to everybody. We can point everybody to the same committee to get things started. Yes? I'm not seeing any committee called constituency groups and caucuses, so I'm just wondering where that vice chair comes from and who those people are. Uh, they are all ghosts. They're not real people. We just put. Uh, if it, I, I will check to make sure that's in there, uh, but if it's not, it needs to be. The last one. Okay, next. Oh, I'm sorry. The compliance review that compliance review committee was struck in uh, in suggestion 5F just previously uh, shown. And I think that what that really should say is the uh, credentials and affiliate organizations committee and not the compliance review committee. Anyone else? Now, next slide. I, which establishes a compliance review committee. So, I, you know, it's in there. Um, Basically, it says what the uh, duties are of the Compliance Committee and then how they are, uh, uh, how it's populated. Any questions? Next. This is, um, question. yeah. <coughs> I just have a question about uh, the last part there. You've struck how all the numbers are going to be uh, put on there, and then um, we'll go back to the prior one because it doesn't make any sense. Okay, general council parliamentarian caucus chairs of each legislative chambers, and two in DC members, at least three other state committee members. Now who? Uh, does the state chair just go to appoint committee members, or can people volunteer to be on these, or how does he appoint these state committee members? And mine gets back to the Compliance Review Committee. Are we struck it in 5F? Are we reintroducing it here? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you gotta say, hey, if we 
come over here. <laughs> Mr. Chair, um, quick question. Just both of the changes that have been previously discussed from the board, you, you mentioned you've had a lot of really good suggestions for changes or revisions, and the ones that maybe are yet to come that we haven't heard about. How are those going to be incorporated into today's deliberations since the screen would say one thing and these changes might suggest something that's just verbal at this point? Are you taking notes? Yeah, I'm taking notes. <laughs> Sorry. Mental notes. What we will do after you vote on these changes is we will then put out a version of the committee uh, of the bylaws that incorporate all the changes. And we are going to uh, numerically identify it. So as we add changes, you can see you know, what, is, what is current and what is not current. Um, I anticipate that at the end of this procedure, we will probably present an entire document uh, for everybody to look at and then ask for that to be approved. But literally, we are easily a year away from that. Anything else? Here you go. I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, I asked previously about the three other state committee members being appointed by the state chair. Uh, I'm thinking that we have too much state committee running this, and this is a compliance, basically overviewing your own self. I think we need to have people volunteer or be appointed from each of the um, the districts um, to come as these other committee members. We shouldn't have the state chair. And everybody here is basically uh, right in the main group of, and it's too much power there for a compliance review committee. volunteers absolutely it is not unusual for people to call the party and ask to be appointed to a committee and get appointed to a committee uh, if they're qualified for that committee Uh, thank you, um, Chair. Uh, from what I'm seeing, we're not in readiness. Uh, I don't. I don't think we can even consider at this point in time voting on these bylaw changes uh, until until this is uh, rewritten and redone, uh, and and uh, we be and we we get a good copy to look at. Uh, and I'm concerned about uh, a few a few um, uh, charts ago. Uh, you struck out uh, so many different issues, and one of the things I saw was ethics. Uh, and I haven't seen it brought back into the picture as yet. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned, uh, as a state committee member, I, I would like to see uh, this thing to be tighter, uh, and, and the fact that more of us in the community, uh, um, uh, in this democratic community, have some sort of input in it. Thank you. Comments. By the way, you're not going to vote on them today because we, you know, we don't have a quorum. So it gives us some time to rework some of these things. Um, what this one does is it basically um, makes it clear how we uh, interface with the Democratic National Committee. Increasingly, the uh, DNC is making money available. 
um, to state committees, but there are things we have to do to qualify for it, uh, one of which is um, we have to write formal proposals, which is in this, and the other is that we have to do a SWOT analysis, which in fact we have done. It was a wise thing to do anyway. Um, we want to make that something that is required uh, of the party, uh, whether or not we're actually applying for something. Yes. Um, this goes back to the original comment about strategic planning and strategic planning committees. You, uh, in the state of the year, you roll that function into this. And this goes back to Joel's comment just a second ago. Are there going to be modifications based on what was made today the next time we see this document? Or are we going to have to vote yes or no on what we're looking at right here? And so, for instance, if on this strategic planning, we would have to say, uh, no on elimination and no on that being in that statement right there if we felt so inclined to do it. Or are we going to get another document that's modified to reflect the will of the body at least as I've heard today? Uh, there will be some additional changes. Um, it actually doesn't sound like there be, there are more clarifications than, than changes, and I think that would be a smart thing to put in it. I can project. Um, I'm just wondering why, with this new committee we're creating, rules, budget, and operations, that's a lot of functions rolled into one. And I, I'd like to understand your reasoning for cutting the, the required membership from each congressional district out of this particular new and powerful committee. It would seem to me that with all these functions that are on this committee, there should be a member from each congressional district and helping to make these decisions. Is that a forum issue? I'm trying to understand why that's cut in this proposal. Why, why are we not going to have a member from each congressional district in the Rules, Budget, and Operations Committee? What's the reasoning behind that change? Can you give them a brief synopsis of that question? Because they couldn't hear it, movie. If you got to say I can reject, they can't hear you. All right. The question was, when we're formulating this committee, why is there nobody from the uh, state committee? That's on the no. Oh, I'm from the congressional committee. Yeah. Yeah, why is there a deletion suggested there? Line two. Line two. Yep. Why isn't there geographic distribution? One from every congressional district. Where should I start? Um, I probably because it's yeah, that, that, that's where I'm getting to work. I think it actually <laughs> makes sense to make sense. <laughs> no, probably good. No, it's because it's because so exactly I'm the ask the committee to uh, reconsider or come up with a good decision. Thank you. 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 Thank so keep that in the back of your mind, but that that also that makes sense to me. So we'll have a discussion about that. Hello, I'm just wondering if anywhere in this document you discuss democratic values because it is so important in today's world. We need to set them forth, and we did that in some of the um, bylaws that I've been working on. Uh, they are in the charter. Uh, this is not topical to this discussion. Can we get a numerical update on that 160 number if we're close to quorum? Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's see if we can. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you. I wanted to ask, since a lot of the complaints I seem to be hearing about the budget and the strategic plan is that we're not getting one, 
Uh, should we put a deadline for this committee to get the budget out, the strategic plan out? Is that something we put in the document so we can actually have accountability on if we're going to bring it in or not? <laughs> but the problem with it is what happens if they don't meet the deadline. And so if you can if you can give me a solution to that, I'm very willing to consider it. But you, you can't fire volunteers. <laughs> Hi, I have kind of a procedural question. I have a procedural uh, suggestion, really. There are a lot of good questions that are being raised, and it would seem like maybe we could send these. We've had these document. We've had this document. Uh, I, I have to say, I read maybe a half of it before I got here. Uh, but maybe we could go back and um, make changes that you feel are, have been been suggested already. Send it out again, and then we really plow plow through it with a fine tooth comb. We send our questions to you, and then uh, you get some an you know, get some answers, and then do like a, a, a summary out, a, a synopsis of questions and answers, and it might cut down on some of the um, uh, debate when we um, actually come back together. I can tell this is not ready to be voted on. Uh, this, has been, this has been the one area since I've been chairman that has needed to get done. Um, I'll take what the pleasure of the State Committee. We sent these out to get responses. I think it's very limited in what we got back. Uh, it doesn't say comment. We're glad this is your this is your process. This is your input. We're not trying to ram this thing at all. We want to be deliberative. We want people to have input. We want to get the responses. And the things like adding the strategic committee, I know that Rebecca has worked with the group. I know that she has a budget with her not here who runs the data operation. Maybe better to answer some questions on that. But uh, this is not intended to try to ram anything down. And I think it would be helpful, though, to go through the recommended changes so that Mike, who's leading the committee, would know which which things to be back, bring back to you with changes so we can send them out and get them back so we can eventually get this adopted because it, it does need it. We're a lot of years are out of date. Um, I still think it'd be helpful to go through them all so that Mike can hear from you. So is that what I mean, we're here, let's let's get some work done. Okay. I I just want to make sure I was reading everything right. Well let's let's plow Let's keep plowing through, okay? I have one suggestion to make. You said, first of all, it's on our call. Secondly, it's taking you on your process. My recommendation is, again, a suggestion, a recommendation. I'm a college professor, you don't cram two chapters to the student at one time. <laughs> Let me share with you if I can. If you send, for example, every week one section of it and given deadline, if you don't answer by the end of the, this week, that's what it is, what it is. Section by section, maybe 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 13 weeks, 14 weeks, and then when they come in, you have their name, Recommendation, someone raised their hand say, I'm sorry, you didn't answer, that's the year. That's the end of it. That's what I think you need to do by cramming the whole five chapter in one day with a the student. They don't have retention power and they don't read. These people, I promise you, I promise you, 
75% of these people, they didn't read the document before they got here. That's the reality. Please break it down little by little and then let them digest it. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Catherine. Um, I just want to ask a question, a real quick question. How many people in this room are actually on a committee and go to the meetings and participate in that committee? Well, that's pretty good. But there's a lot of people who aren't. So I think it's important to recognize that it's because there, if this is our party, it's not Mike Jablonski's party or DeVos Porter's party, it's our party. So we all have to participate in ways that we think are important. So if you think a strategic planning committee is important, we should volunteer, go to the meetings, participate, make sure it happens. Okay? I know that wasn't a question, and I apologize. We all remember back in the uh, 70s when we had inflation, annual inflation, running 10 to 12 percent. We were specifying 5 percent a year for pay raises. What I would suggest is not put in the bylaws something specific like that. Refer to a document like rules or something else that can be changed without having a requirement for two-thirds of the state party or state committee to approve. We got a live one. Comment. I'm on the credentials committee and several years ago it was awful what the state party went through just to get everybody credentialed. I, we spent hours on the telephone, two and three times, calling the different county committees all out there in the highways and by, couldn't even get minutes for the meeting to show where the people were elected. Now, let's don't be the pot calling the kettle black. Let's get our county committees in order, push our stuff up like we're supposed to, and this will all work. <laughs> I was just going to say, we've heard a lot of folks saying like, oh, like we're definitely not ready to vote on this and like people not liking parts of it. But I'm guessing that a lot of us who aren't saying anything, it's because we are pretty happy with the version you came up with. So some of us probably do like it. How it is. <laughs> Last year there was a uh, discussion about going to electronic uh, communications and voting. I assume that's going to be in the uh, later section. Uh, if this is going to be going the way it's going right now, can can we anticipate that we can do this rather than having another meeting? Uh, possibly uh, the vote. Uh, I, no. Is there any way that you could do it on an electronic rather than pulling everybody back in for another vote? Uh, quickly, no, okay, just, just a question. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Lucas Newborn. I'm the chairman of the Democrats of Paulden County. Go Paulden County. I come to you guys as a very hopefully I'll be representing in this lovely District 14 next year. I uh, first and foremost want to say thank you um, to DeVos Porter and to our board for the leadership you've provided. I think it is important though that as a state party, this is where it happens and quite frankly y'all, I found out about this meeting through a friend who got an email from another friend who found out from somebody else. These meetings belong to the people. They belong to every Georgia Democrat. Yes. Not just people elected, because everyone sitting in this room, thank you. Because each and every one of you represents someone in your county. You represent hundreds of people, thousands of people in your county. 
Your voices matter. And when we're voting on things that are this important, I think that we all should have that voice and that say. It is what separates us from the other side. I hope that our state party listens and understands that young people are interested. This was not put on Facebook. It was not on the DPG website. As a county chair, I was not made aware. This is not acceptable. It is not acceptable. And it is fixable, y'all. Please take this and understand it is, cons it is constructive criticism. It is my hope that we create and develop a system where we have regional folks, such as our congressional chairs, that get the information properly so that we can properly conduct business as a state party. So again, we have got to start holding folks accountable. We talk a lot in my county about transparency. Transparency is when everyone is in the know, when our state family is in the know. So from today, please note, the reason we don't have quorums might be that we don't know that it's happening. No. Thank you. No. Hey. Um, I'm Sally Rosser, and I'm a DNC member, state committee member, and I would like to say I was the chair of the bylaws committee for a millennium. Um, it is very difficult work, and it is it is hugely time consuming, and it is not exciting. Um, and I want to thank the committee for what they've done because they have done. I think the good news for us today is that we have something to respond to, and we should move from today to respond back where you have concerns and ask the committee to figure out how to communicate those back to us between now and the next meeting so we know we were all heard. And I just want to thank them for what they've done because I've been there and done that and thank them for what they're about to do. Amen. Would you like to respond to anything or you want me to just keep taking it? Keep going. Hang on a second, sir. They still can't hear you. Oh, no, they can't hear you. They can't hear you. What he's asking is you. Let's get through the bylaws. You need them. I, I make a motion that we let the council go through this, uh, the work that he's done, and, he can, and explain the reasons for the changes. And we can make notes as we go along. And as time permits, we could probably come back to this. But please, let's move on. I'm very interested in some of these things that he, and his, uh, and his reasons for the changes. I'm interested in that. Thank you. I make that motion. This is no meeting. We haven't done it because it is flavor intensive, it is time consuming, but it's important. They let Mike go through everything. Did y'all everybody was sent copies? Okay. You should have these. You should have had time to look at them. I don't know what happened about not getting the notice there. We'll fix that. But everybody should have gotten the copy. Let's go through them. I, it's this wonderful input. I just, you know, the, I understand the state on the strategic committee. We got it. This is that time for him to come through. Let's get some input. Why don't we go through them all? Mark, if you don't need it, mark any questions. We'll take those at the end. Okay, that way we can get through them uh, with a reason for it, because a lot of it piggybacks on different parts of it. So you may have a question that may get solved as he goes through. So the response to the motion that, Mike, let's go through them, then we'll take questions. Okay, last one, please do it. Thank you. 
Uh, my name is Michelle Sanchez from Hall County, and I just wanted to say that the treatment that new members, progressives, and Joe Trena have received in, from the county party in Richmond um, is deplorable, and we should be voting on that, but we don't even have new business on the agenda. Right. Yes, thank you. First of all, I'm glad that my students aren't the only ones who don't read everything they can assign to them. <laughs> and secondly, about this not being Mike Chablonsky's party, I think I misunderstood what happened at the beginning when you all looked at me and pledged allegiance. <laughs> Suggestion 5J is just deleting uh, existing language because we take care of the strategic uh, planning committee in, in other places. Thanks. Sorry about your mic. Uh, constituency advisory committee um, basically list who should be on it and um, uh, mandates that the committee be at least twice a year. This has been actually a pretty effective committee. They do, in fact, be. Uh, I also want to point out, on any of these committees, people who are not assigned to the committee can still participate with the committee. Uh, you, you, know, you can give them information, you can attend meetings, uh, you just need to make yourselves known on the next. Uh, this is new. Uh, as you know, we now have a full-time voter protection person on the party in there. I'll tell you, I've been doing voter protection most of my professional career. One of the things I've found, now that we have a full-time, is things are a lot worse than I ever thought they were. And uh, uh, we're finding out a lot of things that we would not have uh, even thought were possible in the past. Um, this basically tells who the membership will be in that committee. Next. Uh, recruitment committee. No. Listen. Okay. Uh, recruitment committee. Again, we just named uh, who was on the recruitment committee. Uh, note that this committee allows additional appointments by the state chair. If somebody wants to volunteer, that's the way to do it. Next. Um, the national committee election, we've increased the time uh, to uh, call the election and increase the time to hold it. It's basically because that's an election that has to be made by the state committee. And as the state committee has grown, and frankly, as the state committee has uh, gotten to be more active within the party, we need more time to interface with you. So we just changed the uh, the dates of the time track that we can have these meetings. Um, the delegate selection method. Um, this principally deals with what happens at the uh, state convention. It echoes what the charter uh, of the Democratic Party of Georgia says and echoes what the charter of the Democratic National Committee says. Uh, we've changed mass mailings to emails um, about notifying uh, about who gets, I'm sorry, who, who gets notifications. Um, I think we've had some good questions about uh, making that more effective, and I think we'll have to have a, uh, a staff meeting about that. I do want to point out that the existing bylaws only require notice of the state committee members. It is an excellent idea that uh, anybody we know to be a good Democrat get uh, not only notified of the meeting, but that they're allowed to attend it. So I think, I think we will discuss how to do that next. Uh, put it next, because that's the... Um, oh, this is essentially the affidavit the candidates have to use. It has been changed 
um, for use with uh, uh, people running for party offices. In particular, note that uh, about three quarters of the way down, it has um, the uh, uh, person signing it proclaim that they believe in the goals of the Democratic Party, that they're not a member of any other political party, a variety of other things. Um, but we put that in because that does give us a little measure of, um, uh, of influence um, should we have somebody come in and not want to adhere to these things. Next. All caucus votes by uh, paper ballot. Um, that's essentially to require, essentially to establish a paper trail. Same thing for committees. This is essentially uh, what we do, what the uh, bylaws say that we do right now. That what happens is notification should be given to the congressional district chair then is supposed to for, forward everything to the state party to uh, uh, to hold. We did the, we made these changes um, just to make it clear in one place what happens. For example, the uh, affidavits with the state party for record uh, at the moment that is in the duties of the state chair, where it really should be in a different place that the county committees would. Uh, platform committee, um, very important committee, uh, it's mandates who should be on it, and um, it actually uh, mandates that we use municipal and county officials also. Next. Next. Um, we delete webmaster as being a committee member, uh, principally because we now have somebody who is a full-time director of social media. And there really was not, no reason to have a committee uh, these days that deal with the web. Next. Uh, this just um, makes it clear when we are going into the state convention who has the responsibility for work, uh, working with legislators. Uh, this is a new one. Uh, and what this does is it authorizes the executive committee to issue rules and regulations about procedures. So one of the things I've been pushing for for a long time, anything that is procedural, um, things like forms, when you hold, meetings, how meetings should be held, should be a rule. The rule should be reviewable by the state committee if there's any objection to it. The reason for doing it as a rule is we cannot suspend anything that's in the charter bylaws, but you can suspend rules um, if that is necessary to meet a specific exigency. Um, state law actually refers to rules that are done by the executive committee. Uh, we want to make it clear that the Democratic Party is going to uh, start using uh, that as a way to uh, uh, operate uh, quicker. Oh, um, B, we're going to allow participation in meetings by electronic or other means, and then do the same thing for votes. The way I anticipate that working is um, we go to the state committee, the state committee appoints however uh, number of people it thinks important to explore what other states are doing, and by the way, we've already begun that exploration, um, and what technologies are out there. It seems to me that it is currently crazy for us to call everybody together twice a year on a lot of these issues. A lot of these issues uh, could be dealt with with some kind of webcast and some kind of electronic voting. Yes, there are um, problems with electronic voting, uh, but I think we can go ahead and look for uh, 
solutions to it. The idea, though, is to uh, mandate that the state committee, excuse me, that the executive committee do that. And then the thing I think goes for voting. This is the one thing I plead with de de Democrats any time uh, we talk about this. If you have any expertise in this area, if you know anybody who has expertise in this area, have them get in touch with us. Because I'm really, um, uh, really devoted to the idea that we shouldn't be using up all your time driving to Bacon or driving to Atlanta when it can be more uh, usefully employed in other areas. And I think that's the end of it. Now we can take questions. There's a, some kind of text in software. I don't know if we could, I don't know what it's going to cost, but in, in for meetings and stuff like that, because everybody carries their phone, um, just texting them the meeting, dating time, location, that might be more efficient um, for the party and so that nobody gets missed. And, and because most of us have so much junk mail coming in, it's easy to miss stuff to now, just, just because. Yes. You might consider voice activated voting. Bob Gibling, I'm, Article 3 deals with the state convention. I don't see in this document anywhere where it specifies when the state convention or how often the state convention is held. Is that in someplace else or should that be in this document? Um, there was an email that went out to everybody that basically said we're going to have a um, conference call with everyone to discuss issues related to the state convention. If you if you read you know everything about the state convention, we have since changed our operating procedures where what we say the state convention does is no longer necessary. So one of the dialogues I want to have is what uh, what should be done at the state convention, and we're going to try to institute that as quickly as possible. So no, there is not anything talking about it that is in the future. I will tell you it's in the very near future because we have to have a state convention. <coughs> Hi, my name is uh, Sean Callahan. I'm from the uh, Fulton County uh, County, and um, I'm the newly elected membership chair. I'm sorry. Um, I kind of thank you. I I kind of wanted to uh, echo some of what New Lucas Newborn from uh, Fulton County said. Um, this meeting is not on the website. Um, I also know that there is a state party convention coming up next month less than two months from now, of which we have procedures in place to elect delegates, but the county parties, and, and I know you're shaking your head no, but we have all of these things in place. There's been no communication, and if anybody reads the bylaws, they're gonna go, hey, uh, the state party's having a convention, and no one has been notified less than two months out, and we're technically, according to the bylaws, supposed to be notifying the community and letting them elect delegates. I, so I just don't think that's acceptable for us not to have at least some kind of notification in place. Do you want to answer that? Good evening, my name is Vivian Thomas and I'm out of Henry County and he echoes some of the very same concerns that I have. I. The, uh, you stated we have a webmaster that's on staff now, and it is unacceptable to have a webmaster on staff and not have good information on our website. I called down to the office to get information about this meeting, any meeting, and I can show you my emails that I did not get answers for at all. And we want to be a part of this group. We're working at the local level, but we need information from what our leaders are here. If there is a convention coming up, it's not on the website. This meeting was not on the website. I called to get information, and the guy got so tired of me, he told me, they don't tell me, I can't tell you. 
That's unacceptable. We're paying people to run that office. And we need more information so we can be involved in our party help make good decisions. Thank you for your effort, sir. I think you put a lot of time and energy in trying to give us some good bylaws. But good bylaws is not helping your foot soldiers when we want to work. And we can't work when we don't have leaders that's giving us good information. When is the election for the delegates? I've gotten two or three different answers verbally, but nothing on paper. So my chairman doesn't know what to do. So please help us be good soldiers on the, on the ground here. Excuse me. I I hear this too, and I'm concerned that we get to a meeting as important as this is, people have driven all over the state and we didn't even have a process to understand who was going to come to the meeting. You know, it's like step by step, RSVP, however we find out before the meeting how many people were going to be here, um, that would have been a good idea. Um, like what you're doing, understand the process, but this is too important for us to be feeling like this. Who's next? You're next? That's okay, you're next. Uh, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. Uh, I love the fact that we can do stuff electronically. We can get information out to everybody about all the stuff. We can do a vote maybe. Uh, after everything's done, but we can't have this discussion by electronic. We have to have these kind of meetings to discuss these issues because there were a couple of things that came up that I didn't understand and I got clarification on. So we can't do everything electronically because we're not hearing everything. But after we've done all these meetings, we go back and we go back out and let everybody look, then we can do voting electronically. So, it's my understanding that we're commenting on everything that was presented. Yeah. So, suggestion 7G, which had to do with the members of the platform committee, which was reducing the, the state district reps from three to two, and then adding uh, some additional elected officials. I, my comments to that are, we need more representation across the state, not less. And I'm not sure what the value of bringing elected officials in, other than to have that committee lobby them, uh, to get their input about what the new policy being brought up back here about you know younger people, more progressive, more things that are the new platform that we will be developing and we need to figure out a way with which to make that available to people. Um, to the, you know, what you were talking about. I mean, it's like to set up the platform committee, you have to, it appears that you have to be a delegate to the convention. That may or may not be true, but the, the wording in the document we were sent so that speaks directly to when do we have that committee, who could be that, is that happening prior to August 25th when we're going to meet as a convention, when I hope to sit there as a delegate on the platform committee or be chosen? I don't know. For a point of information, I know that time is upon us. Do we have this room for a certain time period today? I'm serious. This one time is contracted for a certain time. And the other thing is, before we leave, we have other businesses that we want to talk about. I know the caucus reports haven't been made, but we need to at least give a statement for the uh, August 25th meeting on how to get the uh, delegates there while we're here, or who's going to send that out. 
That's key. And we've got a DNC uh, sponsored meeting here on July 19th for Get Out the Vote. And uh, George is the host, and we're not talking about a number of things that are right. We won't have a meeting before that. And I just really want to make sure we cover those important things. So as a chair of the Cap Democratic Party, I can take this information back. Agreed? <laughs> Thank you. Let me, let me talk about the state convention. There is an email that will go out tomorrow, Monday, um, that answers most of these questions. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to have a conference call that everybody can join in on, where we look for ways to expedite the uh, election of uh, convention delegates while still making, it, making certain that it's a diverse group and that was not controlled by any one group. The reason to do that for this convention is this is a peculiar convention in that uh, this is the last one under what I'll call the old bylaws, and one of the discussions we need to have is what's the purpose of a convention, what do we have to have done at the convention, and then that will be at some future state committee meeting presented as uh, as bylaws, but you're absolutely right about needing information. I, I need the information myself. The, <clears throat> that is all going to be uh, initiated uh, Monday. Who is going to get that email? Right. Who will receive that email? All the county chairs, all the delegates, because some people aren't getting I'm just curious. Who's getting that email? The email will go to the congressional leaders and county chairs, and it is the responsibility of both of them to make sure it gets disseminated to all the counties in the district. And I will be sending out one personally on Monday because I will be telling all of our county chairs on the delegate process and how they need to go through that election. Have we considered changing the bylaws, uh, the quorum requirements for bylaws changes? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the current version of Robert's Rules of Order suggests that large groups, such as our state committee, not have a quorum requirement for anything. The reason to have a quorum requirement is so that no small portion of, of an organization can come in at a small meeting and then dominate the meeting without other people knowing that. Um, what Robert's Rule says is you don't have that problem when you have a, um, when you have a large group because even though you may have lots of members of a small group that can, a small faction, um, appear, at least they will have somebody who can speak. So yes, we are considering that, and uh, we will make a proposal on that. Hi, Michael. Uh, Arnold Martin, Chairman of County Affairs Committee. First of all, uh, thank you. Um, thanks for everything that you and the committee are doing, because we know that this is really challenging. I guess the big question that some people have had is, Based on the process of having to have a quorum, could you tell us what the next steps will be? We didn't have a quorum today. If by chance we have the situation again where we meet again and there's not a quorum, what what will be the plan? Uh, the plan for the future beats me. No idea. We have had the situation in the past. We had a, about 15 years ago, we had uh, something that absolutely needed to be changed. Um, and I don't remember what it was, but it, it affected our ability to send delegates to the Democratic National Committee. We had to have five state committee meetings before we got a quorum. Um, so hopefully we can figure out a way to do this. Pardon? 
That's not a bad idea. We could do that. I mean, I think I was kind of leaning towards doing away with the forums altogether. But that, that's, that's a good alternative. I wanted to agree with Donna. I think we should send out all meeting notifications by text and email. Um, the other thing is, I know you can set up um, on a website like an executive function where you have a password protected area, and we could probably, do, in my opinion, do that for th this purpose and any other sensitive. Uh, the data that uh, the state committee deals with, and you can simply just sign in and view everything, and even comment. Yeah, in addition to that, one of the things that, that I want to do is uh, when we have the password protected section, I get tons of questions that repeat, and um, I would like to write up answers put them someplace where it is protected and say, yeah, get on the website, you know, read number five. The problem is um, we don't have that section yet, and I don't want to educate the Republicans on, on what the law is in several areas. So until we get that, I'm, I'm just, right, that's okay. We'll talk about that. Thank you. My name is Gabe Okoye with the County Committee. Um, thanks for the great job you're doing. And thank you to Bruce and Executive Committee. Um, this is my first time in the State Committee. I just got elected not too long ago, so I'm going to be asking rookie questions. Right? Um, well, first of all, I wanted to uh, suggest that you may have a more nucleated party and um, where you're going to have the county chairs be more welcoming and accommodating and working much harder if they also feel more welcomed by the state party. All right? Um, I ask some of my fellow county chairs, especially um, in the Atlanta area, about how they were welcomed after they got elected nothing. That was the answer. Okay, well, an ordinary email, welcome aboard. And maybe send them a copy of the, an electronic copy of the state bylaw so they would know what um, the state says as opposed to what their committee bylaw says. And, um, you know, they'll feel a part of it. That's one. And then um, the other rookie question, uh, that was a rookie comment. And the other the rookie question is, I went through this document, and none there did I see um, a, a term of office, you know, for the party. So, is it in a different document? Um, don't we have that at all? This question I want an answer. Is, is, is it state committee members? And the, and. And the, exec and the executive uh, and the officers or something like that, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I'm David Good again from uh, Douglas County. Um, I've been part of the state committee uh, member for two years, and before that, for four years, I was actually the chair of the Douglas County Democratic Party. The one thing I did always notice is that anything they had to do with state committee, it never, I never saw it on the website. And, that, and honestly, for me, I'm just speaking for David, I don't believe it needs to be on the website because we're taking care of internal policies. And usually, when it's something that's going to come up as a meeting, the state committee members are sent something, and then the CD chairs are sent something because they're automatically part of the uh, state committee. So therefore, using I mean, as a chair, I never got an email about it until my congressional district chair sent it to me because she felt I needed to be in a note. So I believe that's still I believe that's still part of the same way we're going. So there are certain things that does not need to be shared on the website because we're not trying to let others know we're having a, me a meeting that's not a different So that's it. I 
I wanted to at least have one meeting on the bylaws before we got into this fall selection. And from what I've heard, let me just kind of summarize things. What the input is, they want uh, clarity on the strategic plan committee. Make sure that the geographical uh, composition specified by congressional district is retained and an easier way to have RSVPs for meetings like this. Let us take that um, and uh, see what we can do to have something everybody can get a consensus around. Uh, this is a, you know, this is the kind of thing that is very important to get done. But y'all, we got to get an election done in November. And I, I worry about the amount of time and energy that these kind of things take when for that five minutes we're worried about that, we can get another sign in somebody's yard. And get, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I'm getting in a panic stage about that. But it's not that this is not important. We wanted to get something out to you. We wanted to get a response on what your gut feeling and the details. Mike has spent an, an amazing amount of time with the committee in getting to this point. Look through it and read it. Get us the input back, and we'll see at a time where we can adapt and take a next round at this bylaws. This is the first time I've been chair we've really even had something to bring to you because it does take so much time. But we want to have it because of who we are and why we are who we are is we want everybody included. Um, and that's important too. So I'm not trying to, to railroad anything. We need your response, but it's important to update these because these are outdated and have been for some time. So um, if there's nothing else pressing, I know time's getting away from us. I know we want to hear from uh, the committee as well. Those are the main things I heard that, that Mike has heard. Let's get that. Any other things, come through it, get it back to us. Uh, the details on the convention will be going out Monday. We're going to have a conference call about expediting that. main thing we want to do is have our entire slate of statewide offices in one place with a room full of fired Democrats on the 25th to get the rally and the, and the excitement of what we have the opportunity to do in November. So this is the detailed stuff that we've got to do to operate a priority properly. We've come a long way to get it to this point. So let's try to finish that out. Give us your input. Let us know what, what, uh, what fine-tuning we need to do so we can come up with, a, with the bylaws that are modern and that work for everybody. Um, with that, Mike, what else? Let's thank Mike. I mean, he is... And I can't tell you how many times we have to call him uh, during the, well, things you never think. You think you've seen it all, and no, we haven't. There's always some more crazy thing that happens, and there's no one better than Mike Jawonski to methodically get us through each point and get us to that right place. Mike, we can't thank you enough. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking it. I want to go through.